Also, Pete, I would love to go to your place sometime to play Risk. You I know, to. going to tr- going down there at some point would be a lot of fun. I think down maybe there, once I get a car up, going up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, do you want to set up the next game, and uh, do you want to play another game? Yeah, we can play another one. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna um, fill up my water bottle, use the restroom, etc. Sounds good. I'll make sure to save you a seat. You can talk to my chat if you'd like. Sure, I'll do that. You Pete knows that that goes very well. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yo, chat, y'all pick the map. Someone here, throw me a map real quick. Now, just be watching. I'll pick the settings, but you pick the map. Classic, okay. Go straight to your bunghole. <laughs> what the? What the hell? <laughs> Archeanos or Great Britain? I really like Archeanos. Pete says spaceport in all caps. Okay, you know what? E- you're advanced. Okay, two people for spaceport. Okay, then I guess we're doing spaceport unless there's any opposition to that. We also have Great Britain. Seems like Spaceport wins. So what we could do on Spaceport is probably settings not many people have done before. And y'all will see it once uh, Mr. Phil joins us. Tumor's already in my game. Nice. Pete's already in. Maddie's already in. Okay. Well, I'm going to close off the other slot then, and we'll save it for Mr. Phil here. But yeah. Hello, all. How you guys doing? I don't know why we have Pete in here, though. He's just going to lose. Fixed zombies, Yucca, so Mr. X. <laughs> why do you never talk like that in your own videos, man? <laughs> but what's it called? Um, Why doesn't who talk like what in their own videos? Oh, because Pete just says stuff like, you yuckasaurus rex, over the, the settings I've chosen. So do you want the code, by the way? Oh, yeah. Give me a second. Okay. No problem. I want to yeah, hear him do more silly talk. Is it Spaceport Sigma Zombies? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Fixed zombies on Mr. Spaceport. Auto... Chat shows up. Fog off, blizzards off. This should be fun. Oh, yeah. I better ready up. Where do you want to go? It's big down here. I don't know. Because, like, the thing that's weird about the U.S., and the nicest way I can say it, is that it sounds like everywhere that sounds nice actually fucking sucks. So it's like, oh, you know, New York, big city. Nope. It's pretty terrible down here. Okay. Uh, Las Vegas, you know. Great big big lights, lots of like casinos, fun times. And apparently it's just not great there either. So I have no clue where I'd want to go. Um But I'd still would like to visit probably somewhere near the border, I guess. You know. And then maybe as if I go to the US multiple times I would venture deeper and deeper. You're in the US, right, Phil? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what are uh, your thoughts about it? About the places I've traveled? Yeah. Let me play my turn. Fair enough. Because I have no idea where to go. Yeah, that's understandable. I chose these settings because I'm pretty sure nobody here has played them. Or if they have, it was like once. These aren't exactly common settings. That's where that was the easiest one to take, and I don't like it. Like I, I'm not happy with where I'm going, because um, I think the zombies are going to clear out that side. I might change my mind. Um, yeah, these are very interesting settings. I like zombies a lot. I know that Pete, uh, for example, doesn't like gimmicky settings. I don't mind them. It just depends how they're handled. 
I think things like these are going to be pretty t tough to get a foothold going. But Tumor seems to have a pretty good start. So Tumor looks like Tumor they're getting a good foothold. Good start. Yeah. So now Tumor's probably getting their constant now. That's awesome for them. Oh, Text Imperialist says their laptop screen broke. Oh, damn, dude. Yeah. Hopefully everything's all right. Yeah, there are... Um, so, in the, the U.S., has it just like Canada probably is so big. It has so, so many different things, like, um, that... Look at you, you're gonna have a continent early with no bots around, or no zombies around. So, I mean, you can have way different experiences in different places. Um, but, like, for instance, you could go to, like, any big city in the U.S. and go to, like, so we'll take trips with the kids to, to, like, Chicago or Kansas City or you know cities Minneapolis etc and um, just being in a city because we're in a small town makes a huge difference because we have zoos and there's zoos and um, aquariums and science museums you know etc et and, and um, we have these these are probably everywhere now too but we have these pools that are pretty much water parks now you know um so we can just go to this pool that has slides and stuff and make a day of it you know but we don't have that here, any of those things here so um for us like just going to a city is is, is a huge deal pete maybe pete, what are you doing what are you doing pete he's messing with you why are you doing that come on man <sighs> oh well yeah, you were talking about like zoos and water parks going. So. Yeah, I'm just saying like any any city can be can be awesome for us. Um, who's white? Cause I lose, so you lose. But that's stupid, though. It doesn't help either of us. Why are you ruining my game just because your game didn't start well? Let's play real settings now. These are real settings. These are perfectly fine settings. You wanted spaceport, Pete. You shouted from the rooftops, "Oh dear, spaceport!" And I granted your wishes. I just didn't choose progressive spaceport. That's worth a two v one. Yeah, that's worth it. Oh man, I can bot out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but also, like, there's places that have mountains and and there's public parks and, and etc. So, um, yeah, me personally, I'm not like let's go see a big attraction type person. Okay. I'm. I would rather go like camping in the mountains, etc. But maybe that's just because we. We haven't done that because our kids are little. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That's a very hard question. Like, where should you go in the United States? Yeah. He wants to play real set. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I I thought these are real settings. These seem perfectly good. If you know, you don't. Suicide in the Zen 1 and just throw away your game. Then I thought they were fine. Maybe I'm a minority there. I think I'm going to hold this middle for one turn and then the zombies are going to eat me. Uh, depends what you hold it with. If you have threes on each border, then you should be fine. Zombies yeah. seem relatively contained, considering that they're so weak. And then maybe I can eat the zombies. If you don't lose immediately before your first turn, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Well, I also didn't choose the auto setup. I could have picked manual, but then we all know how that goes to zombies. One player loses on their first turn. I don't know. Zombies are wild settings. What's up, Stop Tryharding? Where do you go in Canada? Who, me? Yeah, where's a good, where are good places to go in Canada? I actually haven't traveled way too much in Canada. I've gone to um, Regina before. 
I've been to a place called Rushing River, Riding Mountain. Those two places are kind of nice. They're like little national park things. Um, I don't know. Keep I don't like, travel a whole ton though. Gosh darn it. Oh, I have my manual. manual on. You should be fine against the zombies though. I did that because Pete's breaking everybody. Well, yeah, Pete's just going. <laughs> He's just Macho messing with everyone in this game. <laughs> Although I wonder now if Tumor can survive doing that and fight zombies. He can, because he has six troops. Nice. If I took a tourist to the Midwest, I would just have you go to, like... Well, first off, you would eat steak, right? I'd eat steak? Yeah. Yeah, because okay. it, it actually grows here, right? <laughs> like oh, cow, oh, yeah, I guess so. Huh? Like the cow's right over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, but probably, like, yeah, like, national parks. I don't know what you would even show them. Cornfield? Wind turbines? <laughs> Wind turbines. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So is Maddie just gonna run away the game? I gotta think he bre he should break you now, right? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Depends if he wants to fight with us. But I'm gonna let him that continent since he's not. So. But he could fight with you and kill you, and then what does anybody else do? Well, then he risks tumor going to. Strong in the corner, I think. That's true. You're right, man. Because, yeah, he can kill me, you're right, but Tumor has a big continent, and Tumor will only grow, because Tumor will probably take the launch pad next, right? Mm -hmm. He bots out, yeah. Let's see if the zombies let me kill him. World's largest six pack. Where's that at? Yeah, I want, I want some of that action. The world's biggest frying pan. I can take you to see that. That's pretty fucking that's cool, not, I have to say. That's super close to where I live. The world's biggest frying pan. That's pretty epic. Yeah, I think everyone's gonna hold like one continent. Maddie's case, probably two. And I'm gonna get eaten that. by the zombies eventually. And that'll be that. Are they gonna uh, break maybe they me now? This turn? I did yeah, not they see them breaking me, breaking me now. Unless they go to the corner. Uh, Oh, they got you. Good game, Damn. everybody. Good game. Jesus, dude, Tommy. <laughs> and I had, I had 12 territories before, too. Do you set? Oh, that's a good question. Not a good one. Oh, well, it's good a set you're probably going to have to do, yeah. As long as you have threes on each border, you should be perfectly fine. I don't foresee them putting six anywhere. There we go. We'll see if I can get... Let's see what Tumor does here. I just drives back the zombies, huh? I like his stagger. I like how he's playing twos behind him. That's smart. Alright, so I'm gonna match Maddie there. I probably want an exterior somewhere. So... That's as good a place as any. Yeah, so you can hit me when it's time. No, it's just that's just where I thought would be smart to put it, honestly. The cross is constant's cool. I haven't been there. Alright, take it easy. I wish I actually got to play. Oh, Pete. I'm sorry, Pete. Okay. Maybe, you know, no, the zombies didn't wipe out Pete. Pete just suicided the people. He could have built one sorry. stack and, and 
seen what happened. Yeah, like you don't need a continent. That's the crazy thing. Cause if we all have them, right, we bounce each other out. And we're not going to just kill you for three cards if you have like thirty troops. That so would be you could you could totally just live within the horde and maybe eventually take something like uh, Terminal A or Terminal B. Yeah. And I think I'm just buying my time over here until the zombies invade me and I die. But I think that's incorrect. I don't think they do invade you at all. I think you're perfectly fine. I think they'll have a big turn in eventually. No, but the thing is, though, is that as long as your borders are pretty good, you should be fine. Like, see, even here, they're getting, like, fives and stuff, but they're not sixes, so they haven't broke you yet. Just keep adding troops slowly. Wonder if me and Tumor are gonna be allowed to have a little cubby hole trade. Maddie's looking really strong with a launch pad now, though. Yeah. Plus eight per turn. Me and Tumor get plus six. Not bad. Uh, Not bad indeed. One here. We'll put two here. I have almost no expansion, so I think that my goal should just be to prevent. Maddie from having a shit ton of stuff. Might be correct. Yeah, I What's hit interesting it. is that I the zombies hit. aren't. Sorry, one. I hit his one instead of you, so he just has to travel further to get to me, but you had enough around me. That I couldn't clear you, and so does Tumor. Is e easy from my part of the board, just to yeah. create just to create distance. I don't think it matters very much, but it can kind of help sometimes to like think about that. I think you having distance actually is very strong, because I think you're going to be able to hold out over the next while. It'd be nice if I could get strong enough to take the zombies out of this other continent, but they're they're very strong over there compared to me, and compared to what I will be anytime soon. This Pretty mustard. strong, yeah. Kepler's, Kepler's deck. <sighs> kind of want to break Maddie here. So I think that allowing him to have all, all this is a mistake. I don't think you break him from that way. From this way? Why, why do I break him then? With your one in the top right. Is it this? Yeah. I so guess, He doesn't yeah, have the huh? 20 to punch back your big, your big stack. This is true. Oh, got I it. Still get it. But now I'm gonna probably lose that position. That's true. But then you have. So do. Is he gonna take you out of everything over there? Because you still have probably. your five. You still have your ones. The zombies don't have a way in. We'll see if he wants to battle me for this or not. He does have a trade. Okay, so probably was smart to not open that big stack, didn't I? Yep. He could have, like, really hit you if he wanted to. Could have ended, could have ended my game, This yeah. is good. So he also removes Tumor from there, making it harder for Tumor to break him. 184. This is the turn I was talking about that I'm worried about. Now they break me. Look at this. They did decimate me. They have a 17 on me. I mean, I'm, I'm barely alive. I didn't see this. that, yeah. I didn't see that coming. They have a big hern. Yeah, but I thought they would put it more towards, like, me and Tumor's area, right? Because Tumor already could have put it over there. They just didn't, I guess. I survived. Wow, yeah, you're well. good. You survived barely. Oh, you actually should, yeah. kill. should kill me. So I think now you just keep your stacks split up, eh? Or maybe try and unite them. Use the four to hit the five and merge your two fives together. Yeah, I don't know if it matters. I'm not long for this world. This might actually be a game the zombies win, interestingly. Oh, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse Music Queen goes to to school there. Honestly, I fourth saw these settings going completely differently. How did you think they would go? I thought that like four or five people would have like really strong continents and we'd be it'd 
It'd be, like, interesting because the few players that do get hit by the zombies, like you, for example, in this position, right? We'd have to try and... Uh, like, they'd have to try and survive in the corner of the map. But, for example, now, if you don't die this few next few turns, if you can survive, you're just able to sit over there and you're untouchable, right? Because no one has any significant presence down there. But you guys pay me to sit over here without a con and get second. Well, not even get second. I think that you would be able to build up and get a content eventually. Because eventually, if you have like a hundred stack, you can probably wipe out, you know, two hundred zombies and still have enough to guard. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, I need a continent or a take whatever. Ooh, bedroll. We'll see if I survive. Western, Western Tech. Music Queen, what are you studying at Western Tech? I think now we've stalled out long enough that Maddie's not holding his continent because the zombies will hit him. Oh, yeah. So me and, me and Tumor are now in an interesting position. If Maddie puts too little in the center, then I can hit him anyway, right? Mm hmm. So. Stay there and not get hit by zombies. I like it. See if they put enough in. They do not. They really love my area. Yeah. Oh, but they they like that area over by Tumor too. See how much they have. Before it gets removed. Yeah, this is becoming a pretty big problem. Fortunately, though, he does not match his turn, so I probably hit Gateway BF and move my 10 command deck in to protect. Oh, yeah. Because he's not matching in this turn and he just suicide if he wants to hit me. But I think we can't let him pull ahead, right? I, I think that'd think be so. a big. Yeah, I think that'd be a big mistake. What's interesting is because you died, or not died, but you got like your continent crushed, it now opens the zombies up to Maddie's flank, because that was the biggest problem me and Tuber had, was that eventually he would knock out all our little exteriors, right? But now they're open to him. So unless he knocks all the zombies out of there, they're just going to continually pile up. I think if you have cards, you can. I don't think so. I don't think it'd be correct anyway, because I don't really care if you live or die. Because so, I'm just over here battling the zombies on my own. Yeah, you're like doing the work that I kind of that needs to be done, right? Like you're you're fighting the zombies over there, so they're gonna add stuff over there, making my game more likely to be successful. But now you're trapped in between tumor and if tumor takes. <laughs> Just take the continent. Yeah. yeah, if he tries to take launch pad, then I'll have to leave Maddie with launch pad too. But we'll see. Make a big stack, a threat stack, and then build on your nine. Well, I can't let Maddie hold this as long as Tumor isn't taking that, right? I just yeah. lose. I think so. Because that's just way too many territories and troops for it. I think he'll get you one of these times. Engineering. Biochemical engineering. Well, if, if, he, if he hits me, then he just gives the game to Tumor, right? My brother has a degree in biogenetic engineering. And I think that's what it's called. Um, but he doesn't use it. He's a, he works in tech. Um, but yeah, he was definitely the smarter one. <laughs> he was definitely way smarter. Harder than me. Hey, but now you're here playing Risk, you know? Yeah. Having a good time? He thinks. So he was a big gamer. Like, um. For a while, um. I had some friends that played Dungeons and Dragons, so I played with him. And he loved it so much. Like. Um. This is a massive problem. But then, like, when he found out 
that I was doing good in Risk, he he just it just made him so happy. Like he would like tell people at the gaming store and stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I thought it was pretty cool. And one of, yeah, it's one of his daughters that that watches me play. Um, and I played with her one time at. Um, so what are you going to do? I'm going to take one and pass. Okay, can you not sit there? Yeah. Cool. That gives me Let's more options. There. No, I oh, I said not sit there. Oh, I thought no, that meant sit shit. there. Uh, no. Well, I'm sorry. No, that's fine, but now we're in a really rough spot. That's for sure. I, I thought when you meant not sit there, you meant <laughs> the opposite. No. Yeah. I meant, like, please don't sit there, because now Maddie wins, probably, unless you're willing to break him, which I don't think you are. I'm just going to move. Sure. There's very little incentive for you to do anything to him, but I can't break him now, because he'll get the plus eight and be strong forever. So, uh, um, yeah. It's basically GG for us all. I literally thought you meant the opposite. Uh, nope. <laughs> that's a good game, though. I could move that's in why. there. If you it want to, but I mean, I think... That border. I mean, I think he can hear us. Yeah, and he's going to add a strong-ass border. So... You should just kill me. Put you out of your misery. Yeah. I can... I can commentate. Music Queen loves our misunderstanding. I don't know, Maddie no, and I just are so hope. close. Uh, because we've been hitting Maddie the whole time. But now it looks like it's just going to be a game between those two where I just hold a plus six and pass my turn each turn. <laughs> a cruel fate. It is. We'll see how it shakes out. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even think taking cards off the zombies is worth it anymore. So I think I don't. I just zero card into eternity, eh? Unless... Hmm. So... You I have, wonder. You have to lose three for it to not be worth it, right? You lost two. On average. Something like that. 2.8. Uh, well, yeah, but obviously also that's implying that every three cards you would get a plus ten, which just isn't... If you get a plus four, for example, then losing four troops over three turns has put you negative. Yeah. And you, on average, will lose more than that. But, um, yeah, he just eliminates you here. I think so. I have cards. Three cards. You can make that yep. border stronger. Just to progress the game, eh? Yeah. Now he's really, really strong. I think Maddie wins, no, no question. And Tumor took too long to slow him down. He did. So now we have to hope for a giant zombie wave to fuck him over. I don't think so. I think he's got too strong of borders. Well, I mean, a giant zombie wave will come eventually. And when it does, it's just... That's when we have to hope it strikes, eh? Mm-hmm. The Midwest is There's almost no there. possible way I can negotiate with Maddie for me to get the uh, Terminal A, so it seems like it's just over for me, for the most part. Do you know that Wisconsin's known for cheese? For cheese? Yeah. It's That's pretty where cool. Music Queen's from. Or lives now, I guess. Yeah. I didn't know it was known for cheese, though. Yeah, they make cheese. That's why the Packers are cheeseheads. Ah... Uh... So Matty just expands into eternity unless you guys take turns just banging on him. Which I consider to be incredibly improbable. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, throw the cheese state. Uh, well, what makes what makes you want to be a producer, a risk producer? Like a like a producer for just content? Yeah, content producer, content creator. Um, well, I just like having conversations like this, for example, with people. But uh, I really like just entertaining people. I find that'd be a lot more fun and interesting. I really struggle. Like, I could never do, like, an office job, for example, something like that, doing monotonous work. Yeah. I incredibly struggle with. It's very, very hard for me to do that. Um, and for me, especially as a person, I need new scenery. Not necessarily scenery, but I need, like, new things happening. I can't be doing the same thing every day. It just drives me insane. Mm -hmm. So, with that, you know, content creation would open the window to having that, uh, that opportunity. Because it, the flow of the action is dictated by whatever you really want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So, it would allow for a lot more potential, hopefully. Cool. But we'll have to see. And it's just, as I said, entertaining people. It's just a lot of fun, you know, to know that people actively choose to spend their time, uh, you know, engaging in whatever I'm doing. And finding whatever I have to say interesting is awesome. And knowing that like people want to hear my voice and hear things I have to give input for. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because you've made a lot less videos than me, but you have 170 some followers or subscribers, correct? Yeah, like 76 or something. Uh, so 176. Yeah, so you have quite a bit for the amount of um, videos that you've produced. So I yeah, mean, people, which I'm very people, people want to hear from you is what I, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm very happy that people do. Uh, like that was honestly just kind of my hope is that I was really worried when I was starting all this if I was interesting enough or not. Hmm. And it seems I am, so I'm lucky in that sense. Yeah, that is that is good. Like it, it's it's kind of a struggle for me to try to like entertain people instead of just talk about the game um yeah it's definitely a weird balance i haven't hit it perfectly yet but i think someone like pete has a really well or um even you've seen like drew's stuff right i think drew's pretty interesting yeah they're just like good. naturally charismatic people yeah charisma that's like i like to think i have my own brand of it but i'm not like charismatic charisma. yeah I don't know. You're the cowboy from the cosmos. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. <laughs> You're just in trouble. That's really bad. I like that I move. I like it too. I just didn't see you coming. Maddie's really good, zombies, eh? Yeah. Maddie's a good player. Yeah, he plays a lot of zombies. He's really good. That was a 7 before. Well, technically an 8 before, because it got the plus 1 beforehand. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. I didn't see the plus 1 hit. Shit. Well, um, guess I die. Yeah. And I guess two more wins. Because if you just. Does Tumor break him? Oh, Tumor does. Tumor takes full advantage of how weak he got. I think. A lot of damage. Yeah, because Tumor can afford it, though, because Tumor can use his 30 to defend, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tumor is perfectly okay with that move. That plays only into his favor. Nice. Well. Sixty-nine troops, eh? I don't have the dab. No, you don't. I don't know why I hit that one. So now Maddie hits back, right? This is better. Maddie just go for him. I don't know. Does Maddie try both? I don't know what Maddie tries to do. I don't know why he plays seven there. Maybe he tries to do both. No, he's just saying him. Okay.
and claim what he has lost. Making punch through zombies over and over again, and he gets to punch through two more. Just ones, yeah. And they're his opponent's ones, and not. Yeah, but the zombies need them anyway, so. Yeah, being able to use the zombies is a completely different trick. So, what I think I do, because I don't think I'm just giving up this early in the game, I don't think I want to throw away my match. Is I'm gonna put some pressure on Maddie here, cause he did fuck me after all. Music Queen is asking, what tips would you guys give for someone trying to build confidence to share their talent and love of say music? Uh, the biggest tip is just start. I think, just um, just you know, taking the first step, and uh, I would say. The thing that I haven't done very well is I haven't really had like a clear plan on what I want to do. So have a plan, sit down, think about your goals, what you want, how you, and then a plan on how you're going to get there. But more importantly than that, just start. Yeah, Uncle Matt, Uncle Charlie Matty is a good musician. He's got a a YouTube where he he plays music. He has songs that, about risk on there. Yeah, his risk songs. I love it. Um, another tip I would give, though, I think, is that there's going to be people who don't like you. That is just the way of the world. It is impossible to please everyone. So, as long as you have as many people, whatever you're looking for, you know, um, as long as you have enough people that you can be happy continuing producing your work, that's all that really matters, you know what I mean? Not everyone's going to like you, there's going to be people who say this, that, and the other thing, but I think if you enjoy doing it, and you have people who enjoy you doing it, that's all that really matters, you know what I mean? Negative feedback, especially in this day and age, is very, uh, what's the word, prominent, and it happens a lot. It is. So... Yeah, so you're going to have to learn to get around that in a sense, and that that will happen. That's just how it works. But that doesn't mean you should ever give up on it, and it doesn't mean that what you're doing isn't worth it. Yeah, that's true. Did I, I, you, I don't know if I told anybody this. I had a troll. I had someone who, like, hated me. Okay. Bad. Um... And they would, so, they would say, like, this guy just, um, turtles. Turtles means you don't do anything, right? Yeah. And I, I, I did turtle a lot when I was going novice to Grandmaster in, in fixed cards. Because it's, honestly, it's the proper way to win if you're worried about points sometimes. So just sit and turtle. And yeah, wait. sometimes the best choice is just sitting there. Yeah. And, um, but... He would say it on videos, like he said it on a 17-minute four-player fix video that I won. <laughs> and I took a continent, killed somebody, attacked both players to keep them weak because it wasn't right to kill them, one of them for their card yet, and then won the game all in 17 minutes in a four-player fix card game. And he said it. Um, but he would make negative comments on like every single video, and I'm, I was pretty sure that he wasn't watching it. Them because of the comments he made like that and then um with thumbs down i'm pretty sure all my videos because it was like the only videos at the time i was getting thumbs downs on were the videos he was commenting on um and then also i think he was also subscribing unsubscribing subscribing unsubscribing because my subscribers would go up by one down by one a lot of times like within a day just like if i would check it multiple times a day which I don't recommend doing. Um, it would go up. <laughs> it would go up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. That's really weird. Yeah, uh, and so eventually I just blocked the person from commenting, I, <laughs> because I was like, yeah. That's all you can really do. Yeah. Well, I asked him. I was like, okay, um, you know, let's look at this game. You know, what do you think I could have done? 
I'm, I'm open for suggestions and you know they wouldn't re I, I said things like that to them maybe like two or three times and they wouldn't reply but then they would still say bad things so eventually I just blocked them it's like whatever but yeah the point being um, to jump off of what cowboy was saying is peop some people some people are gonna not like you just to not like you they like to not like pe things or people so worry about it that makes sense or was that a rambling mess no that made sense i think you captured most of what needed to be said really well thank you yeah so thinking about this game now, i'm really curious what uh what all gets done here what each player decides do you like how i move my stack into maddie's continent so then he reinforced the guard from me and then it made it open to tumor break yeah i did but now you have a tumor problem of course so, you know, I have to figure out how I go about that, because I can't let either player win, preferably. So what do you do? Well, Tumor's borders are weak. I have a 77 he can't stop, so I just do this. Right? You, just, you just take turns going into their continent. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to keep them both in check this way. Nice. And Maddie's actually weaker than you. Yeah, and Maddie now has his constant. I'm not harassing him, you know? If he wants to break me, then I'll just team up with Tumor and let Tumor win. But, um, you know, I'm going to keep everyone in check if possible. It is interesting. This is it is an interesting take and risk. This game yeah i think it's very like calculating right because sure like, like pete as he said got eliminated immediately um you were struggling pretty hard from the start and that definitely sucked i was hoping that you would be able to get a better foothold and that maybe pete could too but having the zombies be such an ever-present threat now in this three-player end game means that no one can overextend it into each other and additionally it means that if we want to go around the map to flank someone you know we have to go through the zombies it also helps prevent overexpansion. So, you know, as long as we kept Maddie in check in the time when we need to, now he's probably not going to get that whole side for a very long time, if ever. Right? Mm -hmm. Does he hit your 41? I think it'd be silly, but he might. Does he hit it? I don't know how silly. 43 on 41? How silly is it, though? Well, because if he hits that, then I'll just move my 45 over, right? Because, okay, well, I'm not letting you in, so... What are we doing here, buddy? How's he shaping up? He's just protecting against your 41. Yeah, and that's fine. I don't mind him protecting against me, but I'm not giving him the constant for free either. Because, what, we make the same per turn? He makes slightly more because he has territories? Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to hit him. I'm just going to sit here. Yeah, there's really nothing you can hit. Yeah. And I'm not trying to mess everyone's game up, but now see Maddie has that other one, so he'll start growing pretty big pretty quickly. So what I just chill, I guess. Oh, Chris is here. Chris Brown. Mr. C Brown. Yeah, music queen. Post the music out there. Let people know you're there. Yeah, I think there's also the benefit of, um, I, I assume it has to be the same with music. Like, if you record yourself and then watch it, there's a huge benefit to that. Yeah, and you with, can see what flows well, what doesn't. You yeah, know? in Risk, it's super beneficial. Oh, yeah, reviewing some of my old games is something I'll do decently often. Um Especially just trying to get context for why I did different things, because that can help me informed in the future. So, for example, why did I choose to zero card on my round five, right? That helps me for the future now, because I can figure out, okay, this is a scenario where it's probably actually going to be better to not get a card. Also, Maddie 
He's really lucky. The zombie pathing did not line up at all to break him. So he just holds. Unless Tumor says otherwise, I guess. But then Tumor probably loses his exterior, so no clue. Yeah, you guys are too strong for him still. Combined. Yeah. That's why I'm mostly doing what I'm doing. It's just because I have no need to pick a fight with either of them necessarily, but I'm not giving them free constants either. Oh, that's weird that he moved back. Well, because he, he probably wants to trade, right? So that he doesn't have to hit zombies. And what's it called? Technically doesn't benefit me to fight him. I'm not trying to pick a fight with him necessarily. Mm. Yeah, she's saying that um, other people watch your music as well, and then they can critique you basically or talk about what's going on. Yeah, people do that. Yeah, in risk, in risk too. See, Brown, these are just random settings. pretty fun now. I'm like this. This is like some people prefer the more flashy, like crazy end games where everyone's like attacking like crazy, but I actually don't mind these slow, more paced kind of games where um it's a lot of thinking. Although it does really suck, especially since it's your show that you're dead. Because I think you're really good at um like thinking really critically about things and assessing situations. So I would have loved to have seen how you took the end game here. Or if you were one of these three people, right? I would have looked to kill me earlier to make it a three-player endgame. If I were any of you. But Maddie did it at an appropriate time. No. Okay. But when I Interesting you say that. When I was very weak, I would have been my mind would have been like hyper focused on on killing the weak player. When there's four See, people. See that's where that's what's interesting for you, right? Is you're very much about Trying not necessarily to end the game, but trying to end players as quick as possible. You, you don't want extra players in the match than you need to have. Yeah, and I find that very interesting because I haven't seen many other people like think that way. They either are trying to stay alive themselves, or they're trying to do this or that or whatever the hell. But yeah. you're hyper focused on not with, like on winning and by taking out as many people as quickly as possible to do it. Yeah. So, uh, I I don't know if you ever heard me say this, but one of the big moves that I've used in in regardless of how many players are playing fixed, but and you think of the classic map, like I'll take Europe with a passive hold or North America with a passive hold, and eventually I'll move all my troops towards the Australian player when I'm big enough to take them out, not be food myself. And make it a three-player end game. So yeah. the other players then will be holding, you know, either North America, Europe, um, Africa, South America, some combination of those. And I'll go and I'll kill the Australian turtle. Make a lot of times that'll take me from the strongest player to the weakest player. So like if you watch, uh, like Pete for instance, his fix Friday, he'll just expand and try to be the strongest player and then be stronger and stronger, right? Yeah. I'll actually do something way different than that. I'll become the weakest player, but intentionally. Yeah, and that's that's when I like Australia. I like Australia in the end game, uh, in in global dom, right? We're talking global dom specifically um, because I'm I'm far away, and um, I'm no no longer a threat. They see each other as a threat. So the psycho psychology behind this is. Okay, well, if they know anything about the balance of the game, they're not going to kill me, right? Yeah. And then also, I'm far away. I'm hitting little ones, um, and they're next to each other. And people in proximity to each other eventually punch each other. You know, it's a war game, so eventually they're going to punch each other. So yeah. um, by, by being distance far away, 
even though you know four four territories may not seem like that much it's way different when you're sharing a border than being distance far away and also australia of course has the benefit of having the one border but i, I do, i'll do that to south america as well you know um build up build up take people out build up build up take people out and eventually i'll put myself in the third third place position to to do that so and i don't see a lot of other people doing that but i've had no. incredible success doing that yeah right and that's what i like about this game is that there's a lot of people who have so many different ways of approaching it but can do equally well if you get what i mean like there is a silver way to play risk nothing actually is guaranteed to work everything is just based on how you approach the situation like if i tried the strategy you try i haven't mastered that strategy so i probably wouldn't be as successful with it but i'm assuming also if you tried to do the things that i do because you don't do that all the time you wouldn't be a master of performing that kind of strategy either right yeah when i watch you you're like hyper aggressive compared to me or you appear to be hyper aggressive compared to me um yeah it's a restricted aggression right so i'm very much like i'm pushing the my agenda but at the same time i'm not overextending myself i'm utilizing every troop just as much as i think i can get out of it and sometimes i overestimate what my troops can do but you know, mm -hmm. that's part of territory i guess yeah I love watching what you play, though. I think it's very cool. Thanks. And, like, I try not to start a war till I'm going to finish the war. Right? I'm not just hitting someone's continent to, like, break their continent ever. I'm, like, hitting their continent because they're getting too big, like you did with Tumor, right? Or yeah. um, I'm hitting their continent because I'm planning on not killing you completely, right? Um where a lot of t a lot of people I see playing, you know, whether I'm playing them or I see them on YouTube or whatever, they'll like just hit each other to hit each other. Seems like, or I don't know, I don't know what their motivation is, but usually when I'm hitting somebody, it's like I'm gonna kill you. So I can think of a game where I was a South American player, and it was a <coughs> four-player situation, and somebody got. There, I was allied with them, but they got um, North America, and they only had two cards. So I hit them and stayed in North America with my – moved all my armies into North America. They said, you know, oops or whatever, and, moved, and, and got a take and moved their big army next to me, and then I just killed them, you know. But I, was the, I started a war that I was planning on being the person to finish. Yeah. So I, I call I, I call what I do intermittent turtling, where you like turtle, 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 and then you do something big, and then you turtle, 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 then you do something big. So you may watch like seven, eight, nine, ten turns of nothingness, and then you do something big. And that's very unique, I think. I think most people have a way that they pace themselves. But I think I don't, I've never seen someone that paces themselves the way you do. And it's not a bad thing, of course. It's just really weird because most people pace themselves in like, you know, I'll attack, maybe defend two turns, attack, or something like that. But you're a very defensive, and then one big shove, and then you go back into your shell, and then you come back out and do a big punch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I think that's really cool. Like you, like you kill people without them even expecting you to hit them. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. But I like watching you too because you play very different than me. You, you push it, and I think I've learned from that. You know, I've learned from like, okay, here, here is how in situations, and here's how your opponents reacted, and here's how putting it works out for you right yeah and sometimes i push too hard and die right yeah which is another thing i kind of like about my strategy is that i for me it's not like what's it called because i'm always pushing it with every game i'm learning slightly more about how much i can 
force the action before people get sick of it, right? Just how much I can afford to do. So it becomes a very um, interesting estimate because it basically relies on me knowing how all of my opponents are going to react to my moves at every turn. Because my moves are very aggressive and they almost are always designed to spur some kind of reaction. Like how when I hit Maddie earlier and I sat inside of his continent so he had to fortify to me and that spurred Tumor to make a break because he now could do it. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah, that's cool. So right now, um, I'm curious, what was your opinion of the free for all tournament? Because I know you haven't done one in a while, and you played this one out, not for way too I've long, never unfortunately. Done one. I've never done one. Never? No, it was very new to me to do um, bounties. So, so how did you feel? Um, I made an error on my first or second turn in the first game that cost me dramatically, where um, okay. I was going to hit a 5 with a 1, and then I would have been able to protect my border better. And I got South America, and the African player broke me, and I didn't have enough troops to immediately retaliate. By the time I did, it would have ruined my game. So I think that I would have been able to be buddies with the South American player had I not done that and got myself in a better situation. So I ended up getting third with no bounties in that game. Uh, but other than that, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, in the second game, I got... I was playing Ben, Zerip, and... Uh, there was another Grandmaster in our game. And I got second with a bounty. And I went for a couple of bounties, but there was fog, and I, I missed it. A couple others. So I was very close um, to getting, like, one or two other bounties. So, And I was one bounty away from progressing. I, okay. think, I think I had 21 points and you needed 23, is that right? So I had one more bounty, I would have progressed. So, but, um, I really, I, I had a lot of fun. I think, I, I think, you know, assuming I'm l lucky enough, I think I could progress a lot further now that I've, like, learned the bounty system. Um, and I've also played quite a few um, practice games with people after the fact that I've been eliminated. So that's, I guess that's my take on my play, but um, it's really fun. It's really cool. People come out of the woodwork that you've never seen before to play in the tournament and, it, and everyone gets really excited. It's fun. Yeah, like there's always, I find in every tournament, there's always some new faces that show up that do really well, you know? And that also leans itself towards how you were saying there's plenty of really good players out there that we've never heard of. Those are those good people, you know, that have found a Discord now and have decided to throw their hat in the ring to see how they do. I think yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. Well, I still, I still like, play multiplayer games um, at night sometimes, you know, um, Global Dom. Um, games so i still run into these people that are like like good yeah yeah um, so that's why i was thinking that okay we have another question how have you guys applied your risk strategies to everyday life relationships problems and such that the so in risk you have to look at little cues and then um derive meaning from little cues right um, hear me and Cowboy were talking about what we're thinking, but you know this person's making this. Li they're building an army in in North America, but it's heading towards Asia. What are they doing? Are they taking North America? Oh, I'm the Australian turtle, and it took me a lot to become the Australian turtle. Are they going to slam into me? You know, you have these little cues, and you have to try to interpret them, and then make the judgment call. Okay, should I should I be cautious with these type of cues, or should I be um, you know, uh, more aggressive, less cautious, etc. And I think those those little that right there is a pretty cool thing that I think you can apply to your normal life, like taking little cues from people and 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 
kind of doing trial and error that if someone acts like this then they want this right if somebody does this then they want this I think that's pretty cool um, yeah I think you summed it up really well yeah using percentages I think I think that however good I am at risk naturally some of that is because I already used percentages in my life like I always thought about things as a percentage I already thought about things as a percentage um, but using percentages I think to make decisions is, is pretty interesting as well like this works 70% of the time etc Hmm. Yeah, I love your questions, Music Queen. Thank you. Is there anything? Yeah, they're very good. Anything I missed there, Cowboy? No, those are actually like really good. That was basically everything I was going to say, and not really. I need to spend, you know, a few minutes repeating you. So I think you nailed it on the head, though. Why do you think you're so attracted to Risk, Cowboy? Um, mostly because uh, I think it's a lot different than most of the games out there, right? Because it's not a game where you'll win every time just by doing the same strategy. Like, I play a lot of video games. So in most video games, there's something called a meta, if you know what that is, which is basically... You know, the silver bullet solution that 98.9% .9 of the time will win, or whatever it is. And a lot of video games have those where they're just that. It will work every time. You don't have to question its effectiveness. The only time you'll lose is if someone does it better than you. And I think Risk is really nice because it doesn't actually have that. There's no way to guarantee win. There's only ways to go about winning, and usually more times and not they'll work if it's a good way right mm -hmm. I really like that about the game I think that's incredibly interesting to me I think so too so are you guys purposely pushing the zombies in a corner so that you more or less yeah get rid of them to create chaos or what's going on it's pushing them away and also eventually I would like to take this continent that, two, that the 104 is in if it moves forward to like port of or something. I would like to have that, and then we can share the continent. I don't know. It'd be a weird split for sure, but I think it could work out. She thinks we're very similar in the ways we think. I think mm. I think a lot of Risk players have some similarities. Um, I think it's... Um, we like risk because of something, right? I would agree, yeah. So the effect is liking risk and the cause is there's certain things that are the cause. Certain ways of of analyzing and looking at the world that are the actual that are the cause. So I think you'll find people with very different personalities, but they have some commonalities because they like a strategy game and they like a, um, a I mean, really, there's a lot of psychology in this. They like a psycho psychological strategy game. So there's there's two things that you have to have in common in order to like risk. You have to be interested in psychology, and you have to like strategy. And I think also you have to be willing to put many hours on the table for a game, eh? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, that's true. You have to be willing to sacrifice for uh, something that doesn't have... Oh, we were all so lucky about that infection, dude. That zombie infection literally had a very high chance of hitting one of our 100s. And instead, it infected a 15. Oh man, 
It has, I haven't scary. seen it infect in a long time. Yeah, it's because it's getting weaker than all the players, right? But oh, that's that's really, really, really interesting that it uh. And now it's gonna rock the that. tumor. No, it's gonna stop there. Yeah, it won't break him. The paddling isn't right for it, so we'll just chill. It sucks a little bit, yeah, but he'll be fine long term. He uses 100 and reverses everything the zombies just did, eh? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> there are certain times I can t I can tell that uh, like you or Pete are Canadian. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Is that well, one of them? You say things differently. Yeah. Hey. There are I mean, some, there are some people in northern Iowa that say things like that too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because Minnesota is not far away. So does Tumor make the play I want him to? Come on, Val, please know what I want done. Please work with me here. I'll just each get two continents. Would be pretty sick. I'll just keep up with Maddie. Yes. Yes. One more. One more. Air knows. What's going ah! on? Well, okay. How do I signal? Well, I think you just take something else, or you hit him. I think you just ram. I think you just ram hundreds into each other. I don't think I do that. <laughs> no, that's a terrible idea. Okay. Okay. I'll give him a turn because I really don't want to break this alliance because this is going to be a very fucking tough alliance to hold together. But, it might work. So what I need him to do, is to move into customs. So I'm telling him, take your terminal lobby and move it into customs. And hold a line there. Yes? Right. Where's customs, where you just were? No, I'm moving, but... Yeah. Customs is the one above me, yeah. So... I want to see, okay, so what I'm trying to negotiate with him right now is I want Terminal B and Command Tower. So the continent that is 104 is in, and I want my continent, and he'll have his launch pad, C, and Expedition Command. And we both have a big enough exterior stack, neither of us will get card locked. You know nice. what I mean? Nice. Yeah, it'll be a very testy alliance, but the alternative is that I take launch pad off of him, C, and I don't know if he's okay with that. But if I can take this other one, then we're good, and we can each get bigger bonuses. Maddie's playing this really well, considering that he's currently basically in a 2v1, except that me and Tumor can't full send into him, obviously. But he's doing a really bang on job. I will give him credit where due for it. The zombies adding to that 20 there is always really nice. Helps us out a ton. It's interesting what the zombies I think are making you guys do. Because if this was just a pure pure, pure fix game with no zombies, I think you guys would be like smacking each other like crazy. Oh yeah. But obviously we can't afford to do that. Yeah, because then the zombies just eat you. You guys just... Yeah. Yeah. The person behind you just... There you go. Them. There you go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is this. So I take this continent. I don't break his other one. Collaboration is a pain in my ass, Uncle Chubby Maddie says. And uh, Chris Bound thinks that this the VC factor makes the GM tourney easier in some aspects. Yeah, you can really collaborate. From what I've seen, I'm not in it. There we go. I like this. Look at this fucking setup we got going. <laughs> this is nasty, I have to be honest with you. I love this. This is pretty nasty. It's a it's a spaceport deadliest trap. <laughs> the deadliest trap as we slowly circle in on Matt here. Yeah. I'm so glad that Tumor was able to negotiate with me this continent. And, like, we have about the same amount of territories, right? And we both have two continents now, so we're looking really good. All things considered. Oh, where's that 40 going? 
What's he trying to do with that? He's trying to move, move some land. Interesting. Oh, he's probably trying to guide the twenties away from him. But I think the six just starts rolling back. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not me pathing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't going to use its big army to fly all the way. It sort of did a little bit, but not to any significant extent. And then now me and Tumor will slowly grab more and more of the map as we go. So I've been thinking about a video. Um, but I'm not sure it'll get like any views. It would be should I roll should I roll the three V one? And I just go over different scenarios on when you should add one to it or roll it, not roll it, etc. Um and give like uh the math behind it. Right? I think that'd be really interesting. I'd watch that. Yeah, because uh it it came to mind so I used to add one. So like let's say I I use the classic map as examples because everyone knows it, right? But let's say you have a three in South America and okay. you have a big stack somewhere else. Uh, a lot of people and there's a one to hit and there's somebody else is clearly going to kill your three in South America, right? So what a lot of people do, and I see grandmasters do this, is they add one, make it a four so they can get a 100% roll, right? Well, you can, run, you can run it a thousand different ways, but, but adding one, you definitely lose one extra, right? And you're losing the three anyway. And yeah. um, if you add one to that, your big stack, you may lose one extra, right? So, and it's, it's actually a very... You, have to lose a 3v1 and then lose one when when you're attacking a one with your big stacks so you have to have two things happen that are both lower percentage things right so it's actually not beneficial um to add one to get the 100 percent to to roll a 3v1 so that's like one of the scenarios i would come up with is. So see, listening to you explain that to me, that sounds interesting as all fuck, and I could not see a reason why no one would want to watch that, to be honest. Okay. I'm Especially the calm way that you have of explaining things. I think that's really interesting. Okay. Cause, yeah, because I'm in games with Grandmasters, and they're and they're adding one, losing the one, because someone takes the takes their, th their three and their one, right? Yeah. And it seems like a little thing, but sometimes those those one troops add up. Especially, like, if you have, for example, let's say the first turn, you know, you have four troops and you need to take out five for a continent. Well, that one extra troop will, over the two turns, let's say, if you keep adding one troop to threes to make sure you're getting guaranteed hits around the map, well... You're going to. That's two troops now that you've missed out on hitting that five. So rather than being able to get to nine troops to get the guaranteed hit, you're now at seven troops. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or whatever it is you're sitting at. So I definitely think that's really interesting. And I don't know. I would totally watch a video on you explaining all of the different uh, scenarios. Not every single one, obviously, because that's quite literally impossible to cover. But but I think just knowing that basic thing, like a one minute video, would help a lot. Would help people. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Vicky Dix made a video, and he was like, he was playing a one v one, and he was like, should I roll a two v one to try to get them from twelve to eleven? Right. And I'd always done it without thinking, but I was like, okay, well, really, should you? Because Vicky Dix cares about the math, right? So. If you roll a 2v1, you have only a 33% chance of winning. If you, And if you change it from Balanced Blitz to Manual, you have a 41% chance of winning. Okay, so that number is what's important, 41. So that means um, if you rolled 2v1s three times, you have a much greater, because... 41 times 3, basically, you think about it, is uh, 123. That's 
greater than 100%. That doesn't mean you're going to get it one out of three times, but that's how you have to think about it. So if you roll it, if you roll the 2v1 three times, you have the chance of killing their troop, plus if they're at 12 to get down to 11 or 15 to get down to 14, you're taking a troop from them. So that greater than 1 in 3 chance, considerably greater, right, 23% greater than one in three chance um or 24 the 24 percent because of you have eight extra percent yeah 23 because of the the third so 23 percent greater chance um you you not only take out one of their ones but you also stop them from getting a one so you have two troops that you're killing instead of just one and you have it greater than a third so if you roll it three times, you're better off than you would be if you didn't do it. I'm not explaining that very well, but I could show. No, you. I get it. So. Yeah. So you lose. Let's say you lose two of them and you win one of them. You've you've got a two troop gain and a two troop loss, right? So, yeah. So you're even, except for it's not 33. It's 41. So that's why it makes it worth it. So yes, it's it's worth it to roll the two v ones. And how often? All day when when they're at 15, 18, 12, you always roll it because um, it's the bet it's the best percentage play for your game. It's a one v one scenario, is what he was talking about. So I. I, I would I could maybe add that in there as well. I was thinking of when to roll the three v ones and when to roll the two v ones. So Maddie, I'm curious because you're a zombies connoisseur, right? What's your feelings about these settings? Because you would you play, play zombies a lot, and you're now playing it, so you got the chance to actually play on like P. Um, what do you think of them? You liking them or? Either of you doing the 3v3 tourney? I might if a team approaches me, C-Brown, but probably not. Oh, I lost connection here. Can you no. hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then it's just a game glitch, so... Are you out of the game? Mm, don't know. We will see. Mute Queen asked, what's your best day? to mess with my cords you answer i can still hear you just one moment yeah i'm just trying to reconnect if possible there we go um you can see how she asked it right so like your ideal day what would be perfect my perfect day um that's a tough question, honestly, because I don't know. Like for me, a perfect day. Honestly, I'm not someone who cares for big, grandiose things. You know what I mean? Like I have fun, sure, hanging out with my buddies and seeing like a movie or something. But I don't actually need to go to like theme parks or anything crazy, or like go to any giant, like super fancy restaurant. And I have about as much fun if I was at a park as I would if I was just sitting in my house just hanging out with my buddies online or playing some games or something, you know? So for me, I'm someone where my average day is just a pretty good day. I don't have, like... I don't know. I don't hate my average life. So my perfect day, realistically, would just be a day where I've got settled in life and, you know, I'm able to make content and stream and record and all that and have a PC and... Can just entertain people, and if I gotta do that for maybe ten hours or something on that day, that would probably be my perfect day. It's interesting because I have the stamina that I could do that, right? Um, it's just all about like because I have a computer, I can get a desk and I can sit down and you know all that stuff. I would love to stream for tons of hours on my phone as it is, but I have to hunch over while playing because there's no easy way for me to hold this phone in my hand for that many hours straight. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously 
a cell phone does have weight to it, and that slowly over all that time adds up, and additionally, um, what's it called? I'm doing other things, and so my, I don't know, I can't stream for that long, and my phone dies, because there's battery, obviously, in it, but that would be my perfect day. What about you, Phil? Hmm. I'm going to tell you about a moment that I had. It was a few years back, and it might explain how a, a day might be perfect. We were going to South Carolina to see my friend get married on the beach. Oh, fun. My friend from when we were young. And uh, we had our first child only, and he was two and a half, I want to say. And it was the first time he flew, so we woke up. Got everything ready for the airport. Got to the airport. Um, flew. Got there. And then... Um, I was frustrated because, like... One of the people have to, like, do things. And one of, the, one of us has to, like, hang out with the child. And I was frustrated because, like... It really should be me that's, like carrying stuff up right and me that's like doing doing all these different things um but i was just frustrated from like traveling and having to do it with a kid and all the other stuff that we need etc and uh it was like mid-afternoon we had started early and the whole day had been like frustrating work and i finally my wife and my child went down to the beach i finally got everything loaded into to the um i think it was maybe a condo we were staying in or whatever i was like okay i'm gonna walk down there and as i was walking down i looked through this parking ramp and i saw my son jumping into the ocean and my wife like super happy and um both of them were just like having this pure joy moment that we like had supplied for them you know in each other's company and on the beach and etc and, and even though my whole day had been completely frustrating like all my nerves were like firing i had this like one of the most beautiful moments of my life so sometimes those perfect days are like this juxtaposition of like being extremely frustrating than having a a, a perfect moment because like when I look back at all my days in my life, that's one of them I'm just never going to forget, if that makes sense. You know, I think that story you just told me, Phil, is exactly the reason why I love talking with you. Because oh. you're just, like, because the life you live currently, right, is so different than mine in the sense. Because I'm obviously this 18-year-old kid just kind of doing my thing, figuring out the world. And you're, like, so experienced in a lot of ways. And, like, I don't ever see myself necessarily having a family. Like, maybe I would. I'm not opposed to it, necessarily. But it isn't something I'm actively seeking out. But hearing things like the way you talk about it, it's it's really... It's... Because I can't imagine it, right? Mm. Not that it's, like, oh, it's so weird or something. But I, it's so beyond my understanding currently from my, my position in the world. So it's so cool to just hear some something so different, something I would never like think of or would hear necessarily or say it was the most perfect day. And to know that that's like what ma what makes you truly happy, right? I think it's really cool. It's a really Thanks, interesting man. conversation. Thanks. That was a really well put compliment. Like that that was that was a baller compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I kinda haven't watched the game for a while. No, you haven't been? That's no, alright though. Talking to you. Yeah, we've been slowly progressing the board. I wonder if Toomer's going to put his weight in here now. Or if he's going to leave uh Mr. Mr. Maddie here to get stronger. Because he's currently locking me out of doing anything, right? So I can't actually help him. 
Mm -hmm. So I have genuinely no clue how I'm going to go about this, but we'll see. I don't know how you progress this game. Well, I mean, the way we progress is he breaks Maddie, and we slowly move towards that side of the board, and then we kill Maddie, and then we fight each other, but that doesn't seem to be happening yet. So until it happens, we're just kind of stuck here. But it is progressing, right? Like, we started out from me being in that corner, not getting cards, to now having two consonants each. So we're both benefiting, because we now both have a second consonant. And we're also slowly pushing in on Maddie. Maddie's really strong, though, because he has th three consonants, and one of them's a plus eight. Yeah. You're all Because right. I don't really travel, why would I go to the U.S.? Um... Probably just because the U.S. I don't have... Like, it's, like, right there, so I don't have to necessarily go on this big journey, and I feel like it's the most similar culture-wise to where I am currently. Because... Where I currently live, I can't... Um, what's it called? Like, I couldn't imagine trying to be some... Like, a country that speaks a different language that's so different in just the way that they go about their daily life. I guess that's one of the interesting things about the internet is I can see, obviously, all these different countries that are so, um, not strange, but they're just so much more different than how, like, Canada does things, right, and how our, our society operates and is structured. And I don't know if I could ever necessarily adapt to that and learn all that, if that makes any sense. Also, I think Maddie made a mistake here. So I think what I do now is I do this. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear why he did that. He wanted to team with you guys too against the zombies, maybe? Yeah, but why would I why do we care about the zombies? Why do we want to team against them? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe he thinks this will disrupt me in two members alliance. And it might. Who knows? I have no clue if it does that. But it's still weakening him, so it's still progressing the game anyways. U.S. and Canada are like the same place, I feel like, sometimes. They're very similar, yeah. And that's why I would naturally want to go to U.S. just because it's just like it's so similar. Oh, I don't feel like it's this crazy different place. Is he gonna blitz roll me? Blitz slider? Really? Maddie, I'm not moving. <laughs> You're gonna do that, but I'm just gonna. I'm loving it. Just slam. Just giving two. <laughs> well, of course you just want that, but I feel like Tumor wins now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he was too slow though. I think Tumor wins now. Cause Tumor's almost as strong as both of us put together, right? Almost. We'll see what happens. He should probably break you, right? Yeah. Break you completely. Break me completely, yes sir. So, now we both use. That's fine. I don't mind that too, too much. Break Maddie too? Uh, maybe play. breaks Maddie. I don't know if he cares to though. I think he just takes a third consonant and is happy with that. One that he can protect with two borders. Yeah. There's no world where I can manage to do enough damage to win this, so I guess I just kill Maddie and call my game over. Who knows, maybe I'll run into you in Cossack when I decide to travel. Yeah, that'd be cool. Can I fucking attack? Oh my god, I can't I can't select this territory. It will not do it. There we go. Oh, you're gonna um, take second? Yeah, I'm gonna take second. That's my only choice really. You don't even really have to kill him to do that. I mean I think you have time. No, but I am gonna kill him, yeah. I want that bounty boy, even if it's not worth anything here.
There we go. Good game. Good game. Could you Most imagine if you guys didn't know I was still here and I said good game right now? <laughs> Just randomly popping out after like the hour long match. Yeah. Have you ever seen someone do that on like Global Dom? It's like it's like forever later and then they say good game. Like there's someone that's been gone for a long time. Good game, Maddie. Yeah, they were they were going after you pretty hard. Work with me or kill me. I watched and listened to you say I was strong and you gained the troop lead. Yeah, because I gained the troop lead, but you were really strong up until that, that point, right? And still, even after I did gain it, you were still very powerful. Which was kind of like the conundrum I was in. But and now it seems like the game has decided, because, you know, obviously, I die. And Tumor can beat the bot, or he doesn't. Doesn't really matter if he chooses to or not. He wins either way. Well, I mean, you get you get the W if you beat the bot, and you don't if you don't. Well, yeah, but I don't know if he cares that he gets the W, right? That's true. Because just... in a like in an actual match, he could beat the zombies here for sure. I just don't know if he cares to or not in this match. I think he just takes a circle and then waits on the next turn to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's doing. And I have no reason to stall the game. Yet. No, you don't. I mean, you can't really. No. Daddy, are you a little sore about this one? I was gaining every round. But even that when you had that plus eight Maddie and that plus four, you were actually making more than me when I had the two plus sixes. Because you had more territories. So I actually was not gaining more than you. You were technically gaining on us slowly. It was because you kept hitting the zombies, that's why you were losing more troops. He was fighting the good fight. And then he murdered him. Who me? This <laughs> <laughs> is good fight ended up getting me killed. So he had like a hundred stack of mine. <laughs> Of course, I'm just going to end your game if you do that. It's so very rude. Fatigue sets in, too, when the game goes on for, like, an hour and a half or however long this one's gone on for. Yeah. Me and Pete died long ago. I mean, I died, like, 20 minutes after Pete. I'm sure he didn't stick around. This was a long match. GG. Can he advance? He can probably advance all the way to the middle. Yeah, this is a good game. Roughly two hours, she said. It's a long game. I really enjoyed talking to you, Cowboy. I wanted to do this for a long time. I enjoyed it too. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, man. It was great. Oh yeah, a ton of fun. I always love like hanging out with you. You're a very interesting person to talk to, I think. You are too. Yeah, you are too. I like the way you look at the world. I like the way you look at the game. Um, I've had a great time. As soon as he kills the zombies, I'll probably do some type of sign off. And I'm definitely not producing videos tonight because I'm tired. That's what I call it, producing videos. When I just like download them. <laughs> Makes sense. I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go produce, and she's like, produce. She thinks I'm silly. Yeah, he's going to kill the zombies here. Anything else you wanted to say or add or we missed? Um, not really. I think this was a very good conversation, you know? It definitely was a nice just hangout. Um, I just want to thank you again. I enjoyed it immensely, and I think it was a very good time.
Thanks, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Very good. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah, we will. We definitely will. All oh, right. does he get the zombies here? Yeah, he, he got does. him. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks again. And subscribe to Cosmic Cowboy on his YouTube. I will link it in my videos. And subscribe and follow to me as well. And oh, and Cowboy also does Twitch, so I'll put that in my YouTube as well. GG's, Tumor, GG's. All right, man. GG.